Knows All Access is brought to you by the energy saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca Cola Zero Sugar. Taste the feeling. Welcome to Knows All Access, where we take you inside Florida State Athletics. I'm Jay Sutton, and today we'll talk with head coach Willie Taggart to recap the Wake Forest game. Then we'll go inside the helmet with defensive back Asante Samuel. Later, starting freshman Jenna Nicewanger brings a wealth of talent to the women's soccer team. All that and much more is up ahead on Knows All Access. Second down and nine and a half. Here is the snap out of the gun. Dropping Hartman throws a pass near side. A caught ball tackle made immediately at the nine yard line. And a nice defensive play as he made the catch underneath his legs was Asante Samuel. Shotgun formation, that RPO look and play action fake. Hartman pump fake, pump fake. Under pressure, pressure, pressure. He's going to try to escape. Runs to the back to the tip. Puts a stiff arm in. His tackle short of the five yard line. For a double clutch, here's the snap. Rackman throws it past the far side. Caught ball, far side. Broken tackle, 40. Outside the numbers goes Ontario Wilson. Inside handoff fake and the handoff to Cam Akers trying to get out. He makes it to the corner turn to the 50, down the sideline to the 40, to the 35, to the 30. Hurdles to the 20s out of bounds. It's first down, dropping back to throw. Blackman wide open. He's got Trey McKinney. He's inside the 10. He makes the catch at the six yard line. Shotgun formation inside on handoff. Cam Akers, touchdown FSU. Boy, it didn't take Cam long from the exchange of the backfield, and the Seminoles have the game's first touchdown. It's 9-6. to six. Find a way to get the ball in your best offensive player's hand and let him do his work. And that, right, that time right there, that was Cam Akers' drive. Big run to set him up, get down there in the red zone, and then being able to finish off right there last play. Knowles ready with Cam Akers, the running back inside hand. Hopefully play action fake by Black, which that's all. Piss about Caught ball by Gabe Neighbors of the 40. 35, Gabe Neighbors inside the Wake Forest 30-yard line. Second down, snap to Blackman, steps against the shovel pad to Cam Akers, got a block down to the fifth, 25, to the 20, inside the 20, to the out of bounds of the 17-yard line. Boy, what a spin move by Cam Akers as he felt contact and extends that run for another seven yards. Here is the snap, dropping Blackman under pressure, looks, gets the back, caught ball, Akers, inside the 10, to the 5, 3, 2, 1, touchdown, FSU, touchdown, Cam Akers, touchdown, Florida State, what a great play, an ad lib play, and Akers takes it to the house. Get that young man the ball and let him do his thing. They hand off to Akers, made a guy miss, spins inside the 20-yard line to the 18-yard line. This is the Cam Akers Show. Each back is tied in Trey McKinney. He'll block it. Camp shoots through a hole inside the 15. Now the, the ball is loose again, and Wake's saying they've got the ball again. It is Wake Forest ball. My goodness. Turtle, Florida State, in the red zone, our second of the night. Blackman moving left, the snap a little high. Pop fake, pose a slam route, caught ball by Keith Gavin. He makes the catch at the 50-yard line. Here comes a flag for a late hit to the, hit the defenseless receiver. First down, 10 of the Wake Forest 36. Blackman wants to throw him first. Pump fake, throws a deep fade route toward the end zone. And in the end zone, catch made. Touchdown, FSU. Touchdown, Florida State. Tamari and Terry for the second week in a row. Takes in a big bomb and finds the promised land. Knowles retake the lead. Here is the snap, Hartman. Has the ball, wants the throw, toward the end zone, caught ball at the seven yard line, tackle made short of the mark to make. St. Surratt could not get away. Here's the snap, the spot, the kick is airborne, and Wake Forest has taken the lead. Game over, and the Seminoles fall short. Final score 22 20. Wake Forest on a rainy night defeats Florida State. Well, coach, that was another tough loss on the road. But when you look back at the game, if you look at the stats, you all had more first downs, you were more efficient on third down, you had more total yards, and you controlled the clock. So when you look at the game, do you kind of attribute the loss to turnovers and penalties? Oh, absolutely. You know, we didn't make the winning plays when we needed to. You know, we had the ball down in the, in the scoring zone twice, and we turned the ball over, and that just can't happen, especially on the road, you know. And then we had some critical penalties at a sit tough situation and tough times in the game where we can't, we can't have it. And, um, those are the winning plays you need to make on the road in order to win ball games, and we didn't make them. And at one point in the game, the defense had four straight stops in the in the red zone, and they had five straight forced punts later on in the second half. The defense wasn't perfect, but did you like what you saw from the defense? I did. You know, I got bent but didn't break. You know, um, I think they got six 
field goals out of some of those drives, and um, they got down there quite a bit, and that guys held them out of the end zone and held them to three points, and I think you're always uh, excited when you hold an offense like that uh, to three points when they get in the end zone, I mean, get in the red zone, and um, so I was happy about that. I thought um, we gave up too many explosive plays in the pass game, um, if anything, defensively. And sticking with the defense, Marvin Wilson definitely have, had a big impact on the game. And all week, you kind of talked about him holding guys accountable. After James Blackman had a couple of fumbles late on that final drive, you see Marvin Wilson come over and pat him on the back. Can you talk about his leadership and how much it means to the team moving forward in the final games of the season? I think um, Marvin, his attitude and the way he plays, the way he practices, the, the way he is with his teammates, um, is why guys are playing hard and, and staying together and, and, and trying to find a way to win the ball game. You have guys like Marvin, who's the leader on this football team, that they want to play hard for and they want to, they want to impress and make him happy as well. Another leader on the team, Cam Akers, who had a huge game. I think he rushed for 150 yards and two touchdowns. But he said after the game that he felt that his performance was overshadowed by the late fumble that he had in the game. Do you agree with that? Well, uh, I think so because it was, it was critical in the ball game um, down there. Uh, we had momentum on our side and uh, he was doing a good job of, of, of running. And then when you get down there when we needed a touchdown, where we could have put a little more, um, a little more on the lead. Uh, it was big for our team um, on the road, and I think he understands that too, that you just can't turn it over during that, during that time period. Um, he did a great job of getting us in position to be that way, but um, you got to take care of the football. Well, thanks, Coach. And a little later in the show, we'll talk about the big matchup, the big homecoming game against Syracuse. So stick around for that and much more coming up on Those All Access. Asante Samuel, defensive back, 2018, Broward County, Florida. The first touchdown I can remember was probably in high school, around ninth grade. It was a pick six, so I just like, I was breaking on the ball, ran under it, uh -huh. did my little move, uh -huh. kept it going. I mean, it's kind of like the best feeling because we don't really score that much, so when you score, it's like a celebration, like a, like a party. Long count, slap the hand, Perkins drops, looks to his left, looking to it, under pressure. He is bottled up, flush to the left, throws against his left. It's intercepted, picked off by the Seminoles at the 13-yard line. Under pressure from the Seminoles, and he threw it right into the midst of Asante Samuel. Take away FSU, huge play. I can be outgoing at times, but I feel like I'm to myself. But yeah, on the field, I'm a whole different person, but off the field, I'm kind of like, to myself. I don't know, it's just like, like me and Ham say beast mode. You just gotta go in beast mode and forget about everything that's going on, just turn up. Here's the snap of Lawrence, looking over the middle, looking up close toward the sideline, and the pit end zone is knocked away. Well defended by the Seminole. It, I don't really talk during the game because I'm trying to stay focused, but if you talking to me, I'm gonna say something back, and it's up there from there. Once you get it, when you trash talk and back it up, it's like, now you're on top of the world. You, nobody can't tell you nothing. Yeah, that's the best feeling. Following an emotional win over Miami the week before, the Seminoles got off to a slow start against the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. But with veterans like Chris Winkie and Sebastian Janikowski leading the way, the team would not stay down for long. First and throw second, first down 10 from the 40. Winkie, play action, wants to throw. Looks down the middle, the post pattern is there. It is caught by Dugans at the Wake Forest 42. Back-to-back -back catches by number 80. Good snap, the spot, the kick airborne. And this one is good. And you've got Miner, no tight end. Winky a short drop. Pump fake. Wants to throw the deep pass. Downfield intended for Jermaine Stringer. Comes back and makes the catch. What a catch by Jermaine Stringer. The old G-String, that's his nickname, makes an acrobatic catch at the 17-yard line. Here is the snap on first down. Oh, the double reverse is not going to get anything. Great oh. play. Outstanding play by Florida State's defensive end, Roland Seymour. So it'll be a 52-yard attempt with a wind at the back. Of the Seminole kicker, Sebastian Janikowski, plenty of lay. It is good! 52 yards out. His longest of the year, four short. 
of his previous school record, 56 yard. Second down, 12 play action by Winky. Dropping good protection, throws it across the middle. Caught by Bolden at the 40 35. Dropped at the 31 yard line. Great catch by the freshman. Third down and goal. Winky on the shotgun. Here's the snap. Here comes a blitz from the linebacker. Throws the pass to the corner. Oh, oh great. Touchdown sir. official. Andrew Spell goes airborne and brings it in. From the Seminole 44, Sankey takes the snap. Rolls to his left. Spread out. Oh, oh. he's hitting Slobber. Sacked back at the 48-yard line. Roland Seymour's having a whale of a game. Moving right. Miner goes in motion. Here comes a stun up front. The pass over the middle. Claw touchdown official. Andrew Spell's got two. In a great read, Chris Winky to Atrus Bell. It's left third quarter, final play of the quarter. Under pressure, Sankey, the quarterback. Black bubble, bubble, bubble football. Picked up by Tommy. Big play, Polly. It's a Florida State football. And we've got a new quarterback in there. Anquan Bolden is in the shotgun set. He wears number four, not number nine. He'll run the quarterback. Draw up the middle. Oh, he scores a Florida State touchdown. Touchdown, FSU. He was up. Well, he fumbled the football, but he's already in the end zone. Touchdown. He runs the quarterback draw, finds a seam. Great play. The 33-10 win was a historic victory for Florida State. It extended their home game winning streak to 28 and marked their 104th win of the 90s, the most football games ever won in a decade in NCAA history. Coming up, we get to know freshman soccer player Jenna Nicewanger. The Knolls are gearing up for an exciting week of ACC matchups. I'm Lauren Daly with a look at what's coming up in Florida State Athletics. The defending national champion soccer team will travel to Chapel Hill to face the Tar Heels. The Knolls will lean on Dana Castellanos, who is currently ranked third in school history for most career goals. Last year, Florida State defeated UNC 1-0 to win the Women's College Cup. Over to volleyball, where FSE will take on Georgia Tech and Atlanta on Friday. This will be the Knolls' ninth consecutive conference game. Peyton Caffrey, who totals over 200 points so far this season, is expected to continue leading the team both defensively and offensively. After two weeks on the road, the football team will return to Dote Campbell Stadium to face Syracuse this Saturday for homecoming. The Knolls are looking to avenge last year's 30-7 loss to the Orange. Cam Akers continues to lead the Knolls offense with an average of over 100 rushing yards per game. Kickoff is set for 3.30 p.m. As always, be sure to check out Seminoles.com for what's coming up in Florida State Athletics. I'm Lauren Daly for Knolls All Access. Talented starting freshman, Jenna Neiswanger has been getting her kicks playing soccer since she wasn't much bigger than the ball. Um, I started playing when I was three years old in a rec league near my house, and I just liked scoring goals and playing with my friends. I went into club soccer around nine years old and played a few years up, so I started to get serious about soccer and knew that it was something I wanted to do for a while. While playing in her hometown in Huntington Beach, California, numerous NCAA programs scouted her developing talent, including Florida State. Well, you know, my assistant Mike Bristol identified Jenna a number of years ago. Uh, she was a young player at the time, and uh, uh, we're out um, watching different games and came across the field where she was playing. And was so impressed with her uh, qualities with the ball and uh, her mentality as well. Um, it didn't take him long to kind of get hooked on her and come back and start talking nice about her. Nicewanger denied for one, not twice. Nicewanger cuts to her left, puts it away. Right back, getting forward, got the cross in, it ran through. Nice I just wanted to look at what was the best soccer school and where I could improve the most and reach my full potential. And I think Florida State is the best place for me to do that. She's very talented, hardworking, and she can really achieve anything that she puts her mind to. Yeah, we've seen it here already at Florida State where um, you know, she's a big time player, a big time goal scorer, and she uh, typically is scoring the goals when they matter the most. At only 18 years old, Jen has already proven her abilities as an offensive player. The Florida State soccer staff and team are giving her all the tools she needs to take her game to the next level. Jenna has big aspirations in the game. 
Well, Jenna could have gone to any school she wanted to, and the fact that she chose to come here to Florida State uh, probably speaks uh, uh, very favorably about our team and our program. Um, she has potential to really tap into all different kinds of levels. I mean, professionally, national team. Uh, here she's a versatile player. She's two-footed. She can score goals. She can uh, create goals for her teammates. She makes all of her teammates better. She has great qualities, and you know, she's energetic, and she's just fun to be around. I think that uh, her future is very bright, and uh, with her here, our future is pretty bright, too. I mean, just do what you're passionate about. I'm really passionate about soccer, so it's like fun to play every day. And I think if someone has that same passion for it, I guess, just like go after it and like do whatever you can to get to where you want to go with it. Nice Wonger is eager to help the Knowles win another trophy and go all the way again this year. I'm Ali Rubenstein for Knowles All Access. Welcome to Garnet and Gold Grub, presented by Tico People's Gas. I'm Chef Mike Smith, and with us today we have CY, basketball coach, Florida State University. CY, how are you doing today? Good uh, to see you. Good to see you too. Excited to be here. Uh, it's my rookie season in the kitchen, so I'll take it easy on me. Okay, I will. I will. We're going to do a real simple thing that we like to do for tailgating. We're going to make some fresh grouper sliders, and we're going to use some cheddar cheese to top them with. So see why what we've got today is we've got some fresh grouper. Very important that it's fresh. We're going to use a seasoning. You could use a Cajun seasoning, whatever you like. This is just salt, pepper, garlic. We're going to season the fish with that. We're going to grill the fish on this natural gas grill we've got over here. So now tell me, before you get going, mm -hmm. why do you like natural gas? I like natural gas because it cooks very evenly, especially on a grill like this. You know, you want to have control of your heat, which we do, and you want to have even control of the heat, and that's why I like natural gas. So I'm just going to place them on the grill, okay, and we're going to let those cook probably about uh, four or five minutes on each side until done, until they're flaky. So we're going to move, remove a couple of these fillets from the grill. While that last one's finishing up, I'm kind of just going to give these buns a real quick toast. Okay, so we got all our bottoms down, and we're going to use this sauce, which this is a banana pepper aioli. You could use tartar sauce, you could use whatever you want, but it's got a lot of good flavors to it. So now, we're just gonna assemble them. I just like to use a piece of fish, and I also got some cheddar cheese we can put on there as well, and you got some grouper sliders for tailgating. So, you wanna give one a shot? I'll be the first. Slam dunk. Glad you like it. So that's fresh grouper sliders, uh, tailgate food. CY, thanks for the help. I appreciate it. You can have all those. Take them home. Appreciate it. Thanks again. For more information about this and other recipes, as well as People's Gas energy conservation rebates, visit peoplesgas.com slash cooking. Coming up, we look ahead to this week's homecoming game against Syracuse. The Look Ahead is presented by Florida Farm Bureau Insurance. Register to win the ultimate fan experience at NoseContest.com. All right, coach, after two straight games on the road, the Noles return home to face a Syracuse team that has struggled a little bit this season, but they do have some playmakers at running back and receiver. Um, what stands out to you about the Syracuse team? Well, um, they're a winning team, you know, a team that won 10 ball games last year, so they know what it takes. And like you said, they have some talent on the football team. Things just hadn't come together for them at times. And, uh, we know as a, as a football team that played them last year what they're capable of doing, but it's great to be in Dole Campbell back home um, in front of our fans, knowing that our fans give us some extra strength in those, in those ball games. So, um, and then having our alumni back home, really excited about having them back here. So it's so, so important that we have a great week of practice and go out and have a great performance against Syracuse. And they haven't been able to pick up a conference win so far this season. What do you all need to do to make sure that they don't pick up their first one Saturday at Dope? Well, we got to play better. We got to play better as a football team, make sure we're playing winning football and, and try to play the best that we can play and, um, and make those, those winning plays when they, when they come and when, and when they're needed. Unfortunately, Coach, this team has been riddled with injuries. Is the message this week 
next man up in practice? Is that the message and the theme for this week going into this big game? Well, I think it's always that way. I mean, this time of season, um, for every team, there's a lot of injuries, and unfortunately, uh, we have a lot of key injuries that guys aren't coming back for the season. So um, it's got to be the next guy up. Guy, he's got to be ready. That's why he's here, and um, he's got to prepare and, and take advantage of the opportunity that that, that person has now. So um, our team is counting on him, and um, I'm looking forward to our guys stepping up and making plays. Well, thanks again, Coach, and we look forward to seeing the Nose pick up a win at home. For Coach Taggart, I'm Jay Sutton. We'll see you next week right here on Nose All Access. Nose All Access is brought to you by the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Real Coca-Cola taste with zero sugar and zero calories. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Taste the feeling.